everybody, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, you're checking out my ultimate tips list for grinding experience in the Elder Scrolls Online. In fact, we have several double experience events coming up, including one that's active right now. So it is literally the perfect time to level up some new characters. And these tips will help you do it better, faster, and more efficiently. So let's jump right into the list. For tip number one, of course, we need to talk about getting the right experience of buffs. Now, I did talk about the double experience events coming up, one of which is active right now. So during the Witches Festival, you can use the Witch Mother's Whistle for double experience. There'll be other events coming up, I'm sure, for the end of the year that have similar double experience bonuses. Then, of course, you have either your experience scroll or your experience potion. One of these will stack with any double XP event. Now, these do come in different strengths. You have 50, 100%, and 150% experience bonus from these. I have the 150% here, which is just another absolutely massive bonus. So remember, you can use either a scroll or a potion and stack that on top of your event experience buff. So as you can see here, I've got the increased experience. I've got the Witch Mother's Boon. And then, of course, don't forget about ESO Plus. This is a nice bonus for being an ESO Plus member. 10% increased experience. It's going to be nice as well. And one other thing worth mentioning, the Ring of Mara. If you marry another player in-game, that's an additional 10%. So we're talking about up to 270% bonus experience just from all of these methods stacked together. Yeah, that's going to add up pretty quickly. Tip number two, let's talk about training gear, which is going to add a lot of extra bonus experience to your build, depending on the pieces that you're using. So me personally, what I tend to do with a brand new character, I'll just pick up pieces of training gear that I find, whether it's a belt, a legs, whatever. All I want is training pieces, right? So if you get these in white quality for every single body piece, that's 7% increased experience times seven pieces, almost 50% bonus. And don't forget the weapon. Some people do forget that all the different weapon types in ESO also come in the training trait. That's an additional source of experience. So if you have all of your armor pieces and your weapon, again, depending on the quality, because green, blue, purple is going to increase the amount of experience you earn as well. Depending on the quality, you're looking at anywhere between 50, over 60% extra bonus experience from using training gear. So that's what I do just with a basic character, pick it up as I go. Now, if you want to be even more efficient and if you have access to crafting, maybe on your main character or somebody in your guild is a crafter, you can obviously get some better crafted sets with the training trait and better stats. But don't worry, even if you don't have access to crafting, check out guild traders. Guild traders often have tons of training gear in all levels, level 10, level 20, level 30. And some of these are actually some pretty good sets as well. I mean, for stamina builds you might be able to pick up a full set of trainings hunting's rage for magicka builds you might be able to pick up a full set of julianos or seducer in the training trait at your level so just make sure you search around for guild traders for this gear it can be pretty cheap as well for tip number three let's talk about using the right consumables now stats are not that important except for a few the main one i'm concerned about when i'm grinding up levels on a new character is my recovery the crown drink is one of the best in the game. You can see we get health, magicka, and stamina recovery, which is going to be very, very helpful, especially with a lower level character, just in maintaining all of your stats because you're going to be using all those stats to kill enemies. So some type of drink with recovery is best. I use that over max stat foods when I'm leveling. Now, in terms of potions, you don't need the best potions. In fact, you shouldn't waste potions when you're grinding levels. So things like your tri-stat potions, your weapon and spell damage potions, I would I save those for actual content. And if I need a potion to sustain my build, I'm just going to use a basic Magicka potion if I'm a Magicka build, or a basic Stamina potion if I'm a Stamina build. That's it. You can pick these up from the enemies that you're killing while you're grinding. That way you don't waste any of your good potions and you save those for more difficult encounters. Next up, let's talk about managing your inventory, which can become quite an issue uh, when you're out for several hours grinding up levels during one of these double XP events. Personally, I find my inventory fills up very quickly and it's kind of a pain, honestly, especially when you get those level up rewards and you can't even like clear it out of your screen because your inventory is stacked 
full. So before you even leave town, make sure first you sell off anything that you don't need. Try to have as many clear inventory spaces as you can. Again, when I'm selling off gear, the only thing I really care about is anything with a training trait. I'm gonna pop that onto my build. Anything else goes to the merchant. So I'm gonna start off with a fresh inventory. Now, in terms of like finding your spot where you wanna grind XP, it's actually a good idea to be close to a town. For example, one of my favorite spots is right outside the main city of Stone Falls, right here. And this is literally like a 30 second walk to the merchant. So once my inventory gets full, it doesn't take me very long to, to sell everything off and get back to grinding. Now, if you don't like that, you always have the option of the personal assistant from the crown store. Now it is expensive, but I find it to be one of the more worthwhile purchases just for this exact purpose. Cause if I'm in the middle of grinding experience, especially if I'm further away from a town or I don't want to waste, you know, my expensive experience scrolls and potions, just having my merchant come out, sell off what I need to, and then get right back to grinding. That's going to be the most efficient way to do this while also making a lot of gold in the process. For tip number five, let's talk about grouping. Should you group up when you're grinding XP? I do recommend it in some cases. Now the absolute best way to do this is to group up with one other person. So a group size of two. That's because ESO actually gives you a little bit of bonus experience going from playing solo to being grouped up with one other person. It's a small increase between like five and 10%, but it is there and it can add up a lot over time. So groups of two definitely recommended, but what about bigger groups? Well, it turns out that actually once you increase your group size to three and up, the experience that you gain per enemy killed actually goes back down and it goes down significantly. Once I went from a group of two to a group of three in my testing, my experience was cut from anywhere to 40 to 50% per enemy. Now, if you think about it, I guess it makes sense because maybe the game is assuming, well, you have a bigger group so you can kill more enemies faster. So we're gonna ramp down your experience a little bit just to account for that. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Basically, if you want the most potential experience per enemy killed, stick with a group of two. That's gonna be your best bet. All right, for tip number six, we're talking about champion points and something that some players either don't know about or they forget when they're leveling up a new character is all of your characters actually have access to your champion points. For example, I'm on a level four stamina Dragonite and my main character on this account has about 180 champion points. I can jump into my CP and I can actually put these in to make my character stronger. For example, in the red tree, 60 points goes a long way. I mean, I can get almost 20% reduced damage taken in the ironclad node. You can even spread these out a little bit. You can put a few into hardy, elemental defender if you want. But basically this is gonna help me take on larger groups of enemies without getting killed instantly. You can even put a few points into quick recovery if you want to for better healing. Now your green champion point tree, this is gonna be focused more on sustain and uh, cost reduction. So basically your main type of skill, either stamina based or magicka based, you can totally bump up your recovery here, which is gonna make it a lot easier to just mow through enemies without stopping. So I'm gonna pump some points into my stamina recovery. You can even put a few points into healthy if you want, just to increase your survivability a little bit. If you have lots of points, I also recommend putting some into Sprinter, especially with a brand new character. You don't have any passives to reduce your sprint cost uh, and you're going to be running out of stamina super fast. Finally, of course, the blue tree is going to be our damage focus CP nodes. So if you're a Magicka based build, check out Elemental Expert. Any points that you have, I would recommend dumping them into that first. That's basically going to increase all of your outgoing damage, elemental damage, damage with your staff, and then put a few points into spell erosion as well. Spell penetration basically means your skills are gonna do as much damage as possible. So a balance between those two, that's where I would start. Same thing on the other side, if you're a stamina based build, you're gonna wanna focus on the mighty node. That's gonna increase your physical poison, disease damage. So that's what I'm gonna put these into for my stamina Dragonite. And then a little bit of piercing as well, that's your physical penetration. Again, penetration helps your abilities do more damage. 
So all these adjustments, it's just going to make leveling up so much easier. And you've already earned the points on your main character, so why not use them? For tip number seven, let's talk about grinding locations in ESO. Basically, my rule is I want to find a grind spot with a lot of enemies that spawn very quickly. That's the goal. Now, in addition to that, if you can find melee enemies, that's going to be even better uh, because they're going to come straight to you as soon as you pull them. You can group them all up in a big cluster and then just get them down as quickly as possible. That's the ideal way to grind enemies for experience, and it's really simple. Now, if you have casters in an area, that's fine. It doesn't mean that it's not a good grind spot. You'll just need to adjust your tactics a little bit. What I would do in that case, if you have, let's say, archers or casters, bring in all the melees, go ahead and tag them, and then bring them on top of those ranged enemies. That way you're still getting them clustered together in a group, and then just get them down as you would normally. I do have several videos about grind spots here on my channel. I'll have links to those in the description below. Some of these are very good locations and they're not very well known. So if you're looking for a good spot to gain sub levels, I definitely would recommend you check out those videos. Next, let's talk about skills, specifically what is best for grinding XP. The answer is pretty simple. As you might have guessed, you want to focus on AOE skills and basically nothing else. We already talked about we're going to find areas with lots of enemies. We're going to cluster them together. You need strong AOE abilities to get them down, including ultimates. One thing that I see all the time is other players using single target abilities or light attacks, trying to take on two, three, four enemies at a time, and it just doesn't work. It's so slow. So look at your class skills first, see what area of effect abilities you have, and then combine that with weapon skills. If you're using a destruction staff, use wall of elements. If you're using two-handed, you could use brawler. If you're using dual weld, you could use steel tornado. If you're using bow, use endless hail. You combine a few of these together with an ultimate, and now you are an experienced grinding machine. Also, don't forget that specific weapon types, their light and heavy attacks, also do AoE splash damage. I'm talking about the lightning staff for magicka builds and the two-hander for stamina builds. Both of those actually do bonus AoE damage through their passives. So I would recommend either one of those weapons depending on your build as well. And speaking of weapons, make sure you have a ranged weapon either as your front bar or as your backup weapon for the simple reason of you can tag enemies with a light attack and that's going to be the quickest way to aggro them and bring them into that circle so you can finish them all off together. Nothing is slower than trying to sprint up to enemies and hit them with a melee weapon or even worse, try to use some of your ranged skills and waste all of your resources, and then you have nothing to actually kill off the enemies with. The most efficient way to do it, again, light attacking either with a destruction staff, restoration staff, or with a bow. That's going to help you grind as efficiently as possible. And finally, tip number 10, let's talk about skills. And basically, you just want to have a plan in mind to level up your skills as efficiently as possible. Now in this build, for example, my Magicka Necromancer, brand new character, I really only need two skills and an ultimate to grind experience. I've got my Blast Bones, I've got my Scythe, and then I've got my Goliath. You can even throw in a skill on your back bar, another AOE skill like Wall of Elements, right? Or Endless Hail if you have a bow. You don't need that many skills to grind experience if you're picking the right AOE skills, which we talked about before. So basically you have all these free skill slots. My first slot is free, number four, number five. I don't need these skills at all. So I can plan on skills that I wanna use in the future for this build. I can put those skills there and make sure I'm leveling up those as well. For this Necromancer, I actually wanna play it as a healer eventually. So I'm gonna to go to my Living Death skill line. I'm gonna unlock the next skill there and put that in as my number one skill. That way I can keep leveling up that skill line. I'm gonna level up bone armor as well. This is something that I missed early on. So I wanna make sure I'm continuing to level up this skill tree. And then like I said, I wanna be a healer. Now what's interesting about this is I'm actually using a destruction staff, but I can level up my restoration staff skills at the same time just by having one of those skills on my skill bar. So I'll go ahead and grab the next skill from this skill line, Blessing of Protection. I'm gonna throw that on as my last skill. So now I'm leveling up my restoration staff at the same time. Again, think ahead about what skills you're going to need in the future and use your time grinding up your levels to actually get the right skills that you need at the same time. 
All right, everybody, and that's going to be our list of the top 10 tips for grinding experience in the Elder Scrolls Online. And actually, let's throw in a bonus tip for you. Final thing I would say about this is take a break. These double experience events are great if you want to level up new characters. But I do try to take a break every once in a while. And a great thing you can do during this time is one of the random group finder events, either the random group dungeon or random battlegrounds. Because completing one of these with a double experience bonus on your character is absolutely massive. Uh, I've gained anywhere from two to four levels at a time doing this. So after I've you know grinded XP for a couple hours, I'll, I'll generally jump into a, a random group and I can gain even more levels that way. Remember, you can only do that once a day though. So once for the random group finder and once for the random battleground. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. If you're new here, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. For many more ESO guides and build videos, make sure you turn those notifications on as well so you don't miss anything new. I have several other leveling guides on the channel. I'll have links to those in the description, so definitely check those out to make your time leveling up as fun and efficient as possible. But all that being said, thanks again for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there, and I will see you around in the next video.